fourthly, the fourth thing we want to ask you to do during your care group time is to take prayer requests and to pray for each other. Now, you may say, Alan, that's a lot to get done in 20 minutes. It sure is. You've got to get in there and get after it. I agree it's a lot to get done. But, folks, again, I'm telling you, we feel like as a staff, as a staff team, we feel like that it's a great plan if it's executed. And so, therefore, we want all of our adult leadership to understand this is why we try to set these things up as we do so that we make sure that every Sunday we massage, reach people, teach people, and minister to people, and in particular in the ministry to people, these four things that we ought to do every Sunday morning in a care group time. Now, I want to take uh, just a moment, and I want, to, I want to go over to the board, and I want to show you uh, two different ways you can divide your class up into care groups. First of all, let me say that it's, it's my recommendation that you try to have no more than 12 people in a care group. That's 12 on the row. I didn't say 12 attendees, 12 people on the row. Now you say, Alan, we don't have enough care group leaders to do that yet. All right, then keep working on it. Life's, we understand nothing's ideal and perfect till we get to heaven. But nonetheless, the smaller the care group, the better. The reason that is is because the smaller the care group, the more people get vulnerable and share their prayer request. There's some prayer request you're not going to share in a larger group. I mean, what if you just found out you, your teenage son smoking pot? You, you want to tell the world that? No, I know. Uh, but a smaller group that meets together every week and shares and prays and, and others has got vulnerable in the group, then maybe you'll get vulnerable enough because here's what I don't want to happen. I don't want these people that come with a hurt on Sunday morning and, and we put them in such a big group environment that they never feel comfortable to share that hurt and therefore nobody knows about it. Nobody loves on them. Nobody prays for them. Nobody puts an arm around them and hugs them because we've not given them an environment that they felt safe enough to share it. And the smaller the care group, the more safe place it becomes for people to be vulnerable to share that. Make sense? And so that's the reason we want to keep the... Whatever number you want to pick, the smaller the care group, the better. Now, here's two ways we want to encourage you to divide up your class into care groups. We want you to take the attendance uh, <clears throat> of your class and divide them up by attendance. The, the way you do that is we're going to take in what we call the touch group these would be people that would attend zero to six times a year. Nothing magical about these numbers. Make it zero to ten, whatever suits you. Then we're going to have the ministry group. And these are the people that will attend seven to 23 times a year. And then we're going to have the core group. And these are the people that will attend 24 or more times a year. Basically, they attend at least twice a month. These people come about once every two months. And the truth is they don't come but Easter and Christmas. Well, if their mama goes here, they come on Mother's Day. But that's about it. Now, <clears throat> what you're going to do is you're going to take the people that attend in these patterns. Now you say, Alan, I don't have a year's worth of attendance. Take a quarter and multiply it times four and you got it. Okay? And so what you're going to do, you're just going to list the names of the people that would fall in here. For instance, we're going to say Bill is in the class and he falls in that category. And, and Bob, he falls in this category. And you know, every church has a Bubba, amen? And so Bubba falls in this category. And all you're going to do is you're just going to list the names down through here. You're going to come over here and do the same thing. Just list the names. Same here in the core group. Just list the names. And let's just say this is a class that has 36 on row, so if we want 12 in a care group. We got three care groups of 12. And so what we're going to do is we got care group A, care group B, care group C, we're going to put Bill in care group A. We're going to put Bob in B. We're going to put Bubba in C. We'll put the next one in A, the next one in B, the next one in C, and on down the line. Same thing here, just A, B, C, on down the line. Same over here, A, B, C. And therefore, every care group has the same amount of work, the same amount of workers, and the same amount of potential for growth. And that way, every care group is balanced. Now, the reason I want to suggest this is the first time years ago I ever set up care groups, I did it randomly. And boy, that was, failure is a great teacher, amen? And I failed miserably because in, inevitably what happened, one care group leader got all the people that would have fell in the touch group and he was working himself to death and he had nobody to help him. And he came to me and he said, Alan, I think I'm going to quit. And I said, why? And he said, man, this thing's, it's a 24-hour job. And then in the same meeting, a guy that had basically these people, he said, well, this is the easiest thing I've ever done. And I realized, Alan, I didn't say it out loud, but in my heart, I said, Alan, you're a dummy. You should have never done this. 
And so anyway, that's the reason we've devised it in this pattern so that every, you see, the, the touch group, I'm going to tell you why I call it the touch group. Care group leaders, you ought to try to visit everybody in your care group. But I call this the touch group because I'd visit them, but I wouldn't pour a lot of visitation time into these people. But I would touch them. Touch them. Every week somebody will be calling them. Touch, 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 touch. Because guess what's going to happen in them people's lives? Sooner or later a storm's coming. Sooner or later. Because remember, that's the way life's just stormy. And when the storm comes, because we've been touching them all along, we've now earned the right to move in aggressively and minister to them in Jesus' name. And now they're receptive to our witness and to our ministry. That's the reason we call them the touch group. This middle group, the ministry group, if you want to see an increase in your attendance, I'm telling you, these are the people to go after. Because if they're coming, even if it's somewhat sporadic, but if they're, if they're coming ever so often, what they're saying is, I like this place enough to come, at least somewhat. And what we need to do is just get them to like it more. And, and that's the reason care group leaders, I'm telling you, these are the people. If I was personally a care group leader, I'd find out who these people are in my care group, and I can promise you on visitation night, these people, I'd be out banging on their doors. And I'd be, I'd be visiting them, I'd be talking with them, because in just a little bit, I believe, let's just say you got somebody that's coming, let's say person, uh, this first person, so let's say they're coming 10 times a year. We really get visiting them. We really get ministering to them. And the next thing we know, man, they're coming 21 times a year. Well, they've doubled their attendance. We really minister to them. We really stay after them. Next thing we know, they're coming 33 times a year. We've now bumped them over in the core group. And see, what we want to do is we want to take these people and move them here. We want to take these people and move them over here. And then once they get over here, we want to work the dickens out of them. That's where your workers come from. So that's the reason we suggest that you set up your care groups in this manner. And then, by the way, you ought to probably change up your care group at least annually, but I suggest twice a year. Every six months. Because you, 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 you need to be in one long enough to feel comfortable to share. But then you, you want to meet some other people and be in one with them as well. So I suggest about every six months you ought to change up your care groups. Now that's one way. Let me, let me real quickly give you the other way. This is again, you divide it by attendance. The second way you divide up your care groups is by age. And here's how this works. You take a, a class, let's say it's a class in their 30s, 30 something, 30 to 39. So you got this class, it's 30 to 39. So we bracketed in this class, if you will, in this 10 year span. Well, what happens is we say, hey, the number one purpose of Sunday school is what? Reach people, so go reach them, so you do. Well, you've got a, you've got a, a man in this class, we're gonna say he's 35, but he reaches a, a work associate Leads him to Christ, and a man comes and joins the church and is baptized, wants to go to Sunday school, but he's 45 years of age. He doesn't fit this class, but, it, but guess where he wants to go to Sunday school? He wants to go right here with his friend, didn't he? And, and, and are we going to let him? We're going to mess up our age division if we let him. Yeah, we're going to let him. Can I tell you why? It's reach people. It's teach people. It's ministry people. We're in the people business, and we're not in the age division business. Now, age division is important, and that's another lesson for another day. I'll try to give it to you sometime. It is very important. The wider the age span, the less, the, the less successful you are in incorporating new people into class. I'll, I'll have to help you with that in a, a little bit later on, but at least catch that concept. So now this class, it was 30 to 39. Now we got a 45-year-old out here, and we've moved this bracket all the way out here. Now, in this same class, we've got a lady that that's got a friend, and she won her friend to Christ, and her friend comes and joins the church, gets baptized, wants to go to Sunday school, but her friend's 25. Guess where her friend wants to go to Sunday school? And guess what we're going to do? We're going to let her. By the way, you might as well let them. There ain't nothing you can do about it, <laughs> except tell them not to come. So now we went to 25, and we moved the bracket from, from moving here in a 10-year span that now we've moved all the way out to a 20-year span and we've now got a class, uh, trust me on this one, I don't have time to get into it, but we now have a class that is going to be less effective in incorporating new people into the class because they've gone to a 20-year age span instead of a 10. By the way, the sociologists that study this thing say natural affinities are every seven years. And now we've got a class that's almost taken three natural affinities of 20 years. So what do you do? Well, here's a class. Remember, every adult class ought to birth a new class every two years. And so when you about six months out from your birth, you form your care groups by ages. And so you take maybe 
age is 25 to let's say 28 equals about 12 people. And we'll say 29 to 31 is 12 more and on and on. And maybe you got maybe 41 to 45 is another 12, whatever. And then when you birth, you birth your youngest care group out of there to start a new class or you birth your oldest one out to start a new class or you both birth both your young and your old and you squeeze it back down a little bit. Y'all with me? So what we're going to do here is play the accordion. We're going to start here and y'all go win people to Jesus, will you? If it messes up the age divisions, it'll just mess them up. And we're going to move them out here. And then every two years, we're going to say, hey, birth the oldest or the youngest out or both and we'll squeeze it right back down. We're just going to play the accordion. And then you go grow again. You spread it out. And in two years, we're going to squeeze it down again. Maybe even one year, who knows? But we suggest that you put your care groups, either divide them by attendance or divide them by age. All right? But here's what I do know. We've got to have care group leaders. If, in fact, the task of ministering to people is as important as we say it is, then somebody better own the task. And that's got to be our care group leaders. Thank you. God bless you.